Welcome to IF. Today, government, love it or hate it. We all have our own opinion. We all see the craziness in the elections. We stand in awe of the new US president's hair and find ourselves asking, why do we have to go through this? What if there was no government? It is the system by which most countries have chosen to organize themselves. There are many different types of governments with varying ideas. But what if we didn't have a government? What would things be like? Do you see a world full of chaos? Or an anything goes utopian dream? Well, let's look at what government is, what they do, and how they work. In general, government is a group of people, elected or unelected, who manage a country and are responsible for its citizens. They are funded through various means, operating and managing departments responsible for and maintaining law and developing a country. Some obviously better than others. But today we're seeing anti-government protesters on the march worldwide. They're demanding governments change. So let's see, what if we didn't have governments? What could we expect? Would we revert to a primal existence, living in caves, relying on hunting for our next meal? Capitalism.org states, Man's state in nature, where every man is allowed complete discretion in retaliatory use of force, according to the laws of the jungle, is nothing more than a state of anarchy, perpetual civil war and gang warfare. If there were no legal agency to carry out such a task, each man would be forced to carry out retaliation at his own discretion, i.e. anarchy. So what is anarchy, you ask? Well, it's not chaos, and it doesn't want to see us living in a post-apocalyptic world. So put away your gas masks, just for now. Anarchists believe in a society in which all individuals can do whatever they choose, except interfere with the ability of other individuals to do what they choose. This ideal is called anarchy. It is from the Greek word anarchia, meaning absence of government. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. No need to grab that axe or dust off your studded leather just yet. Let's take a look at some places with no government. Tibet. Tibetans consider Tibet a country. The Dalai Lama and many other Tibetans live in exile. Tibet forms an autonomous Republic of China, but China still governs. Tibet declared its independence from China in 1913. China, however, has never recognized this, and an ongoing feud persists. So, not perfect. And then there's ungoverned Afghanistan. This war-torn area is ruled by warlords and clans. They control their own areas in which they have absolute power. If you don't belong to a clan or serve under a warlord, you're at risk of losing everything. The people live at their mercy. Often they are forced by those groups to hand over money, food, land is grabbed, people assaulted and even killed. Most people think of this place when they think of anarchy. I feel you reaching for that survival gear. A reason things are so bad in the region could be the economy. The region has been at war for decades and poverty is rife. So controlling the little resources that are available grants these groups their power. They wield this power unchallenged because the people do not have the resources to rise against them. But what about a wealthier nation? Would it too dissolve into chaos? Let's take a look at Belgium. As well as giving the world french fries and the best chocolate, they also went without government for a time. Belgium is made up of two communities, the French-speaking Walloon to the south and the Dutch-speaking Flemish to the north. Like most European groups who speak different languages, they sometimes disagree. In 2011, these disagreements led to two whole years without a government. The Francophones and the Dutch set the world record of 541 days without a coalition government. So why didn't the country split in two? There were no Mad Max, leather-clad, buggy-driving gangs ruling the wasteland that was once Brussels. It's simple because of money. The poorer group still wanted to have access to the Dutch tax dollars. But here's the kicker. 
They needed to have a caretaker government to keep things ticking over. So what about a country with no concerns about money? Wealthier countries have better access to technology. These technologies could make it possible for us to govern ourselves. The internet has enabled instant communication and people are organizing. It's already begun. One example is the Republic of Lakota. The Lakotan people wish to secede from the United States. The new republic would encompass parts of several current states and be surrounded on all sides by America. There is a group who make part of a provisional government, but no government exists so far. It will be interesting to see what happens if a new country were formed within US borders. Cascadia is another proposed new country. It too would span parts of America, along with Canada and Alaska. It's a vision of environmental friendliness. Unlike other proposed countries, it would have hardly any government. Alexander Bertic claims that Cascadia is not necessarily all about secession, but rather surviving the effects of peak oil, global warming, and pending environmental and socio-economic problems. Maybe we won't have a choice. Environmental disasters affect us more and more daily. Will current forms of government still work? Whatever happens in the future, I think we would still need a group to enact our choices and our plans. We'd have to form these groups, pay them, and agree with their actions. So not too dissimilar to a government of today. For changes to happen, we as a society need to change. We would need to become more generous, fairer in how we distribute wealth. We would need to take direct action if ever we saw poverty. We have to do more than dropping change into a beggar's cup. We would have to act on problems. We would need to be more responsible for ourselves and each other. Societies would need to adapt and change. Alternatives are being planned. People such as Zach Wiener-Smith, George Mason, Brian Ford and John Bernheim all have proposed alternative ways to govern. But the choice is up to us. We should choose our path. We should choose the future of government. Maybe some of you have rushed off, started welding the mesh to the windows, dusted off your blue coveralls, and are heading down to Bunker 4 as we speak. If so, good luck. Or maybe you're happy with the way things are. Having no government is an interesting what if. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to know your thoughts. Please leave your comments below. If you can, give us a like or subscribe. Till next time.